Today we're going to look at this Dell Power Connect RPS 600. What this thing does is it provides four DC channels of electricity for various servers and other networking equipment. The idea behind this is you have this single device that converts AC from the wall outlet into DC and then you feed all your servers and stuff with a DC supply. Now this has some advantages in that uninterruptible power supplies for when, a, when the power goes out, the batteries produce a DC voltage. So you can just simply convert it to the voltage you need as opposed to converting it and then converting it to AC, which also produces losses. So you lose efficiency every time you have to convert these things. So there's less conversion involved. It's also easier to repair because generally the power supply in this will fail and you can open this up or replace this as opposed to pulling out a big server with like 500 hard drives in it. So uh, yeah, this one has four units and a fan. They're on the front there's just LEDs for the four. This is also the first video I'm shooting using my new camera setup, which has uh, the EOS M using Magic Lantern. And uh, because I'm running Magic Lantern in a way that it records at a higher bit rate than normal, I have to like have, uh, take this shot and then dump it on the computer and then verify that it works because I'm still testing. I'm not 100% sure if it will record properly because you start getting audio errors and stuff once you really start pushing the bit rate, but you get higher detail. So I figure it's worth a try. Uh, and I'm using a little uh, clip on LED light and I'm also using my big LED uh, floodlight that I always use. And I'm also using my lapel mic, so hopefully it sounds a bit better. I'm currently just shooting with the kit lens that comes with the OSM. And uh, I'm shooting down at F8 just to get a little bit more detail because these things aren't very sharp. So I figure I get a little bit more sharpness out of this. So I'm giving it a shot. Let's see how this turns out. I may make other changes. I may have to switch to my proper L lenses for the sharpness, but we'll see. See how this all um, looks in the end once I've uh, got it on the computer. Around the back, we've got an IEC mains connector, the four outputs. I use these little Molex style connectors, a little caution sticker that's peeling off. And we've got four fans. They're all 40 millimeter, as this is a 1U device. I had to take off a whole bunch of screws to get this thing apart, but once I did, it's pretty basic. We have four modules. Uh, each one of these can produce 12 volts at 13 amps and they're all just wired together and there's a ribbon cable that runs out to this small board which appears to just have some 7.4 series logic to handle the LEDs because I don't think this has any form of microcontroller or anything running the system it's just simple uh, like fault outputs from the power supplies and it's just feeding it into this and just producing a red or green light you know nothing Nothing really advanced. So we're just gonna look at one of these modules since they're all the same. Uh, these are made by Delta, who make half decent stuff. And at the back, we have a distribution board with fan outputs, caps for the fans. There's some mains input filtering at the other end. Each one of these is a DPSN150BP. And they're all 12 volt, 13 amps, like I said, and they take up to three amps of mains input. This is just a little shroud thing that they have on them. You take out a bunch of screws, and then you get to the power supply. These are very dusty. In fact, I'm gonna go rinse this off. Moving along, we've got the main distribution board. This is what all the individual uh, power supplies connect to. They connect through these uh, single online connectors and there's a buck regulator on this providing a 3.3 volt supply for something i don't know i guess they feed it along this as well maybe it's for the startup circuitry of each device not 100 percent sure but uh yeah there's just some caps here and a simple switcher from texas instruments and we've got an arrangement of diodes and a fuse and i'm not really sure what this is for because each diode is just running off to each individual connector and it's weird that they're just running everything through these diodes. I don't know if it's just reverse polarity protection or something for each individual connector. And we've got a cap and a couple 
fan yeah a couple um inductors and some resistors for filtering for each of the fan connectors and then we've also got the connector for the ribbon cable which runs out to the front panel leds which we looked at and yeah this is pretty much the only circuitry in this entire device aside from the uh, power supplies we've also got the mains input which is just an iec connector with a cap across a uh, line in neutral and it just runs uh, these little uh, three position connectors but they're just running the two uh, wires to it there's no ground connection to the power supplies there is however a ground connection to the chassis we've also got the fans which there are four of they're delta as well and 12 volt nothing too special they're just kind of standard fans are loud and the power supplies. There are four of these, they're all the same. They are very well built from what I can tell. So I guess if you're uh, uh, looking for a simple 12 volt high current, like I said, these are 13 amp power supplies. Uh, this isn't a bad thing to buy because there's four of them in it and the whole thing, uh, geez, I think I paid like $15 with shipping for this thing. So these are pretty high current 12 volt power supplies. I don't know what their uh, exact specs are like, but they seem to be reasonably well built. There's lots of extra solder mask removed so you can get high current. And there's tons and tons of uh, slots cut out for isolation. There's even a little spark gap, which we'll get into in a second. And yeah, they're just uh, really reasonably built. Although the large caps on the board, such as the main input filtering and a lot of the output caps down in here, are both uh, Nippon Chemicon and Nichicon. Unfortunately, a lot of the caps way down in here that are part of, I guess, the control circuitry are all made by Altec, and they're terrible. So uh, yeah, you may want to recap those if you're planning on using this. But you can see it's actually uh, very well made. You've got these big heat sinks for each of the power devices. And there's the... Uh, bridge rectifier, got lots of mains filtering. It looks like they have active power correction, power factor correction. And yeah, there's some interesting little design things. Like for one, there's a wire running along the, the board for some reason. And <laughs> everything's gooped down, but you still have the odd, like all these little caps are just flapping around. So uh, yeah, they kind of did half the job right they have half the caps done really well and half of them terrible so i don't really know what they were thinking but you know if you were going to use this this would be a pretty simple fix to just go through and replace those caps and and uh, get a much higher quality uh, power supply out of it and again it's a really simple connection you just have the mains input and you've got output as far as i know this is more or less just 12 volt and then the little status uh, lines, you know, high or low for their, their current status. So I think this would be really easily adaptable for something if you wanted it. You could even leave it in the chassis and just link up to these and have a 12 volt line, high current 12 volt line on each one. Moving on to the spark gap here, there's uh, these two little points which are designed to allow a high voltage arc across them without damaging any of the other components. Now, using this small uh, step-up power supply or transformer, you can actually find these on eBay for like a couple bucks. Just look up three volt uh, high voltage transformer and you'll find them. They're, they're, they just take two triple A's or double A's, whatever, three volts, and they step it up to 3000 volts. I had to cut the line here. Now the problem is there's still a little bit of connection so it does charge up some capacitors and stuff. It doesn't work quite as well as it should. Although I did manage to get some good video of it using my macro lens, but you can get the idea of what it looks like. Oh, oh. Nah, it's not working anymore. It's just making a, a buzzing sound. Oh well, uh, luckily I already got some footage of it. I used my, um, 100 millimeter f 2.8 macro l series lens with an extension tube on my eos m to get this so uh it's it's pretty close and uh, it did get some good arcs so i will leave you with that and i will see you next time